Welcome to Lanier Outside. Are you looking for tips on how to help your Bermuda lawn stay healthy and survive through a drought and a heat stress? Today I want to talk about a really season appropriate topic and that's heat and drought stress in your Bermuda lawn. So you can see behind me my lawn's doing pretty good but this is a time of the year where a lot of us are going to go through different droughts and lack of rain, heat stress, and you're going to be looking on YouTube and internet and trying to figure out solutions and things. You're going to get bombed with all kinds of different products and a lot of those products are good, but I've got three simple tips that don't really cost a whole lot at all that may help your lawn survive that hot summer drought. So stick around, let's get into them. All right guys, so the first tip that I want to talk about is the most important tip. I usually save the most important tip for the last, but you know, if you just watch this video part of the way through, I want you to get the most important tip. So the most important tip that any lawn and Bermuda is no exception needs during a heat or a drought is going to be water. And when it comes to water, um, the ideal situation is that you get your water from uh, mother nature, but during a heat and a drought, a lot of times that's not going to happen. So you need to be watering your lawn with sprinklers or an irrigation system if you want to maintain a green and healthy lawn. So a couple things to keep in mind when you're watering is you want to go deep and infrequent. So I water about two times a week with my irrigation system during a drought or heat stress. You want to get an inch to an inch and a half per week if you're not getting it through rain. So I'll bump up during heat. I may bump up and do a third cycle just to get that extra half inch. and. Water and properly is really going to be the most important thing that you can do to help your lawn survive through a heat stress or a drought. All right, guys, so let's talk about my tip number two, and this one doesn't really cost you anything either, so feed it if you need it. So follow your normal um, pattern of fertilization with your Bermuda. This is the growing cycle for it, and what you don't need is a bunch of special products. And what I mean by that is just use your regular fertilizer you know, whatever your plan is, hopefully you're following some extension guidelines, things like that. Use your regular fertilizer to feed your lawn when it needs it. Um, if it gets really hot and you cannot maintain your watering, then you may want to step that fertilizer down a little bit. But the most important thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to apply a bunch of products to your lawn just in hopes that it's going to somehow, you know, beat Mother Nature by adding extra you know, nutrients that you may or may not need, um, you would want to add those uh, based on a soil test and not based on heat or drought stress. So feed it if you need it and don't go spending a bunch of extra money on a bunch of special products that your lawn may not need. All right, so my number three tip is mowing. So I hear a lot on YouTube and a lot on the internet about mowing, you know, often mowing frequent and Bermuda loves mowing. This is all very true, but if you're going through a really extended period of no rain and heat and drought stress, you may want to limit your mowing. But one factor to keep in mind is that you don't mow based on a schedule or a date. Um, you want to mow your lawn based on when it needs to be mowed, based on growth. And how you do that is you determine what your mowing height is. So let's say you're mowing at one inch. So if you're mowing at one inch, then you want to mow your lawn when it gets to one and a half inches because that's the one third rule. Um, you want to always take off one third or less of your lawn when you're mowing. So mow based on when it needs it and not based on a date. Okay, a couple other things to keep in mind with your mowing is that you want to return your clippings. So your lawn clippings are going to contain pretty much every essential nutrient or element that your lawn needs. So if you're taking those clippings off and bagging them, especially during a drought, you're going to be removing essential nutrients and things that your lawn needs the most during one of the most stressful times. All right, so that about does it for my three tips on getting your Bermuda lawn to survive through a drought or a heat stress, keep it looking nice and green, keep it healthy. Um, one important bonus tip that I want to throw in there is guys, um, just enjoy the summer. Um, you know, go to the pool, go to the lake, have a cookout, you know, do what you do and, and enjoy the summer. So your lawn's going to make it through the drought 
and the, and the stress. It's going to survive. It may not look the best, but it's going to come out on the other end looking just fine, especially if you follow these three tips. And the lawn you see behind me, it's probably 20 years old. And how many droughts do you think that lawn's been through? I will bet this been through a bunch and that your lawn can too. Just to recap guys, three important tips to help your lawn survive through the drought and the heat stress. So make sure you're staying on top of your watering, feed it if you need it, no special products needed, and mow it correctly. All right, well that about does it for my tips on how to beat the heat in your summer Bermuda. I hope you found those tips helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing and throw me a comment, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. I am going inside. Thanks.